Well, happy weekend, everybody. It is Friday evening and it's close to 8 p.m. So you know what time it is. It is time for a live show uh, about West Virginia. Yes, yes, uh, West Virginia needs some love. Some people can't even believe that West Virginia has a football team. We have a football team, and it's actually a, a pretty successful football team. We, we've had some rough years in the past three years, but, uh, yeah, we've been really successful overall. Uh, Mr. Voice of College Football, Mark Rogers himself, he can't be here tonight. He's in the midst of uh, moving. And uh, you have my sympathy and, and my prayers, buddy, because I know that uh, moving is kind of rough sometimes. I, I've moved quite a bit in my lifetime. I, I, probably the roughest moves for me was state to state. I've moved from, uh, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've lived in West Virginia and South Carolina. Only two states, but back and forth a total of seven times so uh yeah that was rough so uh yeah man get it done take all the time you need man i'll try to hold the fort down quick question i do have my fan on because i have my studio in my my bedroom is big enough to where i have a studio but uh the ac for this part of the house does not work so i have my fan on the ac for the other part of the house it works there's two acs this don't work i have my fan on so y'all let me know if you can hear it. If it's too loud, I'll turn it down, whatever. But I don't want to start, you know, sweating while I'm going live. That's, you know, that's not a good look right there. But let's get into it, guys. A lot of conference realignment has been, go has been going on. A lot. La and it started last year as far as the most recent conference realignment. Oklahoma and Texas to the SEC. Bombshell bombshell oh man that's uh that's some big brands big 12 done over even i thought that i thought i was like man i hope west virginia finds a spot because there goes the big 12 not so fast the big 12 keeps surviving keeps surviving first go around big 12 loses missouri colorado nebraska that nebraska was a big hit uh as far as hurting the Big 12. A lot of people don't realize that, but it was. But also Texas A&M, that was also a big hit. So Big 12 got blasted first go-around. They did get TCU in West Virginia, lost four, gained two. In this go-around, they lose Texas and Oklahoma. Who do they gain? UCF, Cincinnati, BYU, and Houston. So it evens out, right? Six and six. Uh-uh, that, that's, no, that's not evened out. Maybe the numbers are evened out, but uh, brand for brand, the Big 12 has lost far more than what it's gained. Now, so how do they sit now? Because now, now the Pac-12 has taken a huge hit, massive hit. USC, UCLA, gone to the Big 10. Another bombshell. And, and it's probably, probably not the last one we're going to see. Probably not. So where does the Big 12 sit in all this? Well, they're right in the middle, to be honest with you. Um, over on my channel, I'm going to blue dude because, by the way, by the way, in case you don't realize this, I'm actually simulcasting on not two, but three different channels. We have the regular Voice of College Football channel. We have the West Virginia Voice of College Football channel and my channel, going to blue dude. So three channels at the same time. Big 12. They, they were looking okay, but then, then some things happened. Past, past couple of days. Past couple of days. Made me raise my eye, eyebrow. Now, over on my channel, Golden Blue, dude, about a year now I've been saying, you know, ACC, West Virginia, Notre Dame been talking. And some things happen. It's like, eh, doesn't look like it's going to happen uh, because the first, the first thing looked like that the Big 12 was going to just get picked apart. West Virginia was going to ACC. Nope. Big 12 reloads. Big 12 is going to be fine, right? And then uh, this this last go around, okay, uh, USC and UCLA to the Big Ten, and we hear that the Big Ten is going after Notre Dame. Well, if if Notre Dame goes to the Big Ten, there goes that. That's not happening. And and I thought it was, you know, I thought it was happening. I was like, Notre Dame is not turning down that Big Ten money. It's not happening. 
It looks like they are for now. For now. I'm not saying in the long run, maybe eventually they, they end up there. But for now, they're, they are turning them down. And then yesterday, I heard that ESPN and the ACC were talking about renegotiating their TV deal. Really? Really? Yeah, really. And I'm also on a lot of Notre Dame boards as far as social media goes. And they've been talking, especially the past, I don't know, a couple months, month, month at the least, they've been, it, it's been getting hot. It's been getting hot that Notre Dame is seriously thinking about joining the ACC full time in 2025. 2025 is, is the target year for all this stuff to go down. So, oh man, could it be Notre Dame and West Virginia going to the ACC? Could it actually be happening? Uh, there's still a lot of things that, that need to happen for that to happen. Number one, grant of rights. That's that's whenever you do these uh, conference realignment things, guesses, rumors, whatever you want to call it, uh, for the ACC, it all hits a wall. Boom, stops, hits a wall. What is that wall? The grant of rights. The grant of rights is the wall that everything hits. Yeah, but the grant of rights, man, uh, if, te if teams want to get out, they got to you know pay this and they're not going to pay that and teams can't get in, blah, 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 blah. Well, with ESPN and the ACC thinking about talking about renegotiating the TV deal, that, that would change that. That that would change that. And a lot of people think, well, if they if they break the grant of rights, then, you know, that actually opens up the ACC. They could get picked apart. Not necessarily. Y'all got to realize this, okay? Think about this. The ACC and the SEC are both under the ESPN umbrella. So it's it's like a family, right? So if four of the biggest brands, and we're here in North Carolina, Florida State, Virginia, and Clemson, right, go into the SEC, well, no, they're going to get picked apart. Still, not necessarily. That that could be the SEC bumping those top four brands from the ACE, ESPN, bumping, bumping those top four brands, North Carolina, Florida State, Virginia, and Clemson, to the SEC, so an upgrade, but then trying to pick off teams from the Big 12. Who's their competition? Fox. Who does Fox have? The Big 12. We heard that whenever the Big 10 came in and got USC and UCLA, that Fox is like, we're not even going to bid on the Pac-12, not, not going to touch it. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. That That's probably the right decision. Now not so much because what I'm hearing is – um ESPN wants those TV rights, and what they're thinking about doing is possibly consolidating or merging the Pac-12 and the ACC or keep them separate, and, and they could pick the Big 12 apart from side to side. Some go to the Pac-12, some go to the ACC. All would be under the ESPN umbrella. So the main target for ESPN is Fox. Fox is their competitor. Fox is who they want to give that knockout blow to. So as long as they can scoop up the Pac-12, right, scoop up the Pac-12, keep the ACC, keep the SEC, then they can target the Big 12. And that's when you got to start figuring out where all these teams are going to go. Now, all this is still hearsay, right? Yep, still hearsay. Um, so we, we don't know what's going to happen, but... As each day goes by and and things progress, it just it looks like it's going in that direction. And honestly, I wish CBS would get back into the game because I don't know about you, but I really, really love the theme music to college football on CBS. I put it in my top two. Number one, best theme music as far as sports all time, NBA on NBC. If you don't know what I'm talking about or you've never heard of that, Google it. Right now, right now, NBA on NBC. That is the greatest sports theme song ever. But right behind them is college football on CBS. Uh, more recently, the SEC on CBS. Those are my top two uh, theme songs. So CBS needs to get back in the game, keep that theme song going, because that thing jacks me up every single time. I've, I've heard it since I was little. Uh, whenever the Big East was on CBS and that would hit. If I knew that uh, West Virginia was playing and that music hit, 
I was pumped up, ready to go. Let's watch this thing, you know. Uh, and I'm not a big basketball fan, but NBA on NBC, that's probably the most I ever watched basketball just because of the theme song got me pumped up. I mean, they knew how to hype up the NBA. Now, a lot of people talking about possibly Notre Dame and NBC being interested in the ACC. Well, if ESPN and the ACC renegotiate, that's not going to happen. But, you know, if if NBC were to come in and do that, you know, that, that would be an extra check mark for, for Notre Dame. I, I don't think that's going to happen now. I, I thought that for about a week, but since I heard, you know, ACC, ESPN renegotiating, then I, I don't I don't think it's going to happen. But Notre Dame is the linchpin in all this. Think about this. I don't think that ESPN and the ACC would be renegotiating if Notre Dame wasn't involved. There would, there would be no point because ESPN would be getting those big, big brands pennies on the dollar. They wouldn't have to pay them the big bucks until 2036. So there's, there's no reason to renegotiate. But if you factor in Notre Dame, that's when you have a reason. And all the boards that I went to for Notre Dame, they were talking about, you know, they wanted to join full-time as a full-time member, even in football in 2025. That is the year. 2025 is when the contract with NBC is up. Now, they can renegotiate that and keep their home games for NBC. People act like, you know, Notre Dame doesn't need to join a conference. They make too much money through NBC. No, they don't. Uh Uh-uh. No, they don't. It's like it's somewhere between 15 and 18 million a year. The most money that Notre Dame ever made in a single year was actually in 2020 during COVID when they joined the ACC full time. For one year, they were a member of a conference in football, and that was the ACC. And that was the year that they made the most money. They were able to keep their NBC money and get their slice of the pie from the ACC. So in 2025, they can renegotiate that NBC contract keep the home games on NBC, and then if they're a full member in the ACC, their away games can be on ESPN. So they would be able to keep their NBC contract and get a lot more extra from the ACC. And if it's renegotiated, the value is going to go up. And the North Carolina chancellor uh, of North, of University of North Carolina, he said that uh, the ACC is looking for 60 to 70% of the cut compared to uh, the SEC and the Big Ten. So they're not asking to get all the way up to the SEC and and Big Ten money. They just want upwards of 60%, 70%, and they would be satisfied. So that's that's probably what they're going to try to do. Uh, you know, it, it'll discourage the mid-tier brands from leaving. The upper-tier brands, they'll still probably get bumped up to the SEC, but because, you know, the prices went up, it'll probably be higher than the Big 12, and then they will be able to try, at least try, to entice teams from the Big 12. Remember, 2025. Another important thing about 2025 is the Big 12, their grant of rights is up in 2025. And if uh, if there's a few teams that haven't re-signed their grant of rights, then they could jump over to the ACC. Like I said, whenever I started saying this, this is hearsay. 100%, I admit. But 2025 is the year that will decide if this happens or not. Seriously, 2025. Notre Dame's contract with NBC is up. The grant of rights gets renewed um, for the Big 12. And even for the Pac-12, it's 2024, that their, their new grant of rights. Now, they're trying to get a TV deal ASAP and get some value. Now, there's a lot of things that could happen with the Pac-12. Um when ESPN picks them up. Like I've already mentioned, they could they could merge with the ACC or they could stay separate and try to pick off the bigger brands from the Mountain West to keep some type of value. There's a lot of good teams that would fit in the Pac-12 now that USC and UCLA are gone. Now, you're not going to pick up any brands that's going to make up for that. That's not happening. But you could keep teams that, that would at least keep the value respectable. Uh, you have your Boise States. Uh, they, they have a decent TV market. Probably all-time high as far as where their brand is. Uh, They have a lot of good success against the Pac-12. You have San Diego State. They've invested a lot of money into their football stadium. Uh, They have a decent TV market. Uh, The fans around there need to care a little bit more, though. Even though it's good in size, uh, there's not that much interest 
uh, in in San Diego State. But the potential was there. Then there's UNLV. They, they are they have tremendous potential. The TV market is massive. I mean, Las Vegas, that's that's a pretty decent city, right? Problem is, nobody cares about UNLV. And they have the facilities as far as where they play at. They share a stadium with the Raiders, uh, top-of-the-line facilities as far as a football stadium. So if the fans would just get behind UNLV, they would actually be worth some money. Problem is, fans won't do that. So UNLV, possibility. But the fans have got to get behind the team more, especially in football. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. Um, so there are some brands out there that 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 could add some value. And then there's uh, the Big 12. And actually, I, I had a list that one of my that one of my good sources gave me uh, as far as what ESPN wants to at least try to do. Whether it actually happens, who knows? But this is what they want to try to do. So they want to keep the Pac-12 going, and if they don't merge with the ACC, uh, what they want to try to do is they want to try to get Kansas, Kansas State, Iowa State, Texas Tech, BYU, and Houston. That's six teams. So that would bump the Pac-12 up to 16. And you'd have some good brands. You still have you, you would still have Oregon and Washington in there, and you're adding Texas Tech. Texas Tech has the second highest – uh, fan base as far as size goes, right behind West Virginia in the new Big 12, not counting Oklahoma, not counting Texas, and counting BYU, Houston, Cincinnati, and Houston. Texas Tech is number two. West Virginia, number one. I'm telling you, fan base size bigger than you realize. So Texas Tech would add tremendous value, and you would have a footprint in the state of Texas. And uh, this would this would totally destroy the Big 12 if this did happen. And then for the ACC, they would want West Virginia, Oklahoma State, and Baylor, along with Notre Dame, to join the ACC. That leaves TCU, Cincinnati, and UCF out on an island, right? So uh, maybe they do go somewhere, maybe they don't. But from what I'm hearing, they have the least amount of interest as far as getting them into a different conference. Now, that doesn't mean that these teams like West Virginia, Oklahoma State, and Baylor would stay in the ACC. They would just fill the void that Clemson, Florida State, North Carolina, and Virginia left. This could this could actually turn into a farm system if you really think about it. So the big leagues would be the SEC, right? Top four brands, moving on up, bumped up to the big leagues, a.k.a. the SEC. And then these other teams would come in. Now, if they show the SEC, hey, we bring value. We bring eyeballs. We bring competitiveness. Time to bump us up. SEC's like, yeah, I see you. And it would give us, you know, this TV market, this TV market, and this TV market in the SEC. All right, now, we're going to bump you up. And then they would bring uh, maybe some other brands up into the SEC. Something like that. That's how it could work out. Maybe it doesn't work out that way. I don't know. But most people, and even Dabo Sweeney said this, most people think that, the eventual uh, result of all this is going to be the Big Ten and the SEC, whatever number they get to, 25, 32, 24, who knows, eventually break off together and uh, they create their own national championship, playoffs, uh, NIL rules, governing body, all that stuff. They split off from the NCAA and they create their own playoffs and national championship. So right now, if you think about it, we are in the, the in-between from – where we were to where we will be. We're in a phase. And whether you admit it or not, people do not like change. Change is difficult. It's uncomfortable. Not used to this. What, what's going on here? I don't like this change. But change is necessary. Um, we're going to be that generation that experienced the change. Change happens every so often. Uh, you know, remember your, your grandfather. I, I remember I remember college football, they, they used to wear leather helmets and you know, this and that, and then there was a change, and then another change. Well, we're going to be the generation of this change, and it could be the biggest change of them all. I mean, think about it. Players, well, legally, players weren't weren't paid, but we all know under the table they were paid, and, you know, SMU, death penalty, uh, Cam Newton, Reggie Bush, all that other stuff. It, players were paid, but it was always under the table, and if they didn't, if they didn't get caught, it didn't happen. Well, now it's legal. They're getting paid. 
So this is a whole new generation that's going to be used to something that the generation before wasn't really used to, even though we we knew it was going on, but it wasn't accepted. And if you got caught, you know, some some bad penalties happened, uh, bad consequences happened. So West Virginia is kind of in the middle of this. West Virginia is not a strong enough brand to where they move the needle to where somebody's like, we just want West Virginia. That's good enough. West Virginia needs a partner. Uh, their partner would be Notre Dame. Notre Dame is most definitely a needle mover. I mean, they're a needle mover for the Big Ten. So you think for the ACC? Yeah, it's going to be worth renegotiating a TV deal. So we're a brand that we don't move the needle like that. But at the same time, we do bring value. In the new Big 12, I've already talked about it. Number one fan base as far as fan base size, right? Uh, we're number two in revenue right behind Kansas. And the only reason Kansas is number one is because of basketball. We're not counting Oklahoma and Texas in this scenario. New Big 12. They're gone. Okay. So Kansas is number number one because of their basketball revenue. West Virginia, number two. And most people try to judge West Virginia as far as uh, TV revenue and who they carry. State of West Virginia, that's it. Yes, West Virginia does carry the state of West Virginia. But – we're also a, a pretty big presence in the city of Pittsburgh. One Penn State, this is who carries the city of Pittsburgh. One Penn State, two West Virginia, three Pitt. Yes, West Virginia above Pitt. There's a huge, massive alumni base in the city of Pittsburgh. That's why when, when you'll watch the Backyard Brawl, you'll see a, probably about 40% West Virginia as far as fans go. It's going to be packed out. We will make sure it is packed out. And I will be at that game. And on my channel, Golden Blue Dude, I will actually be doing a, a live show at Heinz Field. I know there's some naming rights going on, but I'm going to call it Heinz Field for now because I don't know what the new name will be or if it goes into effect this year or another or another year. Heinz Field, that's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to be there, and I'm going to do a live show. Should should be uh, pretty interesting. And don't worry, I am bringing a crew with me, so I will be nice and safe. I, I'll, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be okay. And there's going to be a lot of West Virginia fans, too. So I don't fear fear for my life. Um, it, it can get crazy, not going to lie. Uh, Backyard Brawl is a very, very intense rivalry. But I'll, I'll be all right. And I'm going, to do a, uh, I'm going to do a live show. This is going to be a great live show. Uh, so you'll get a, a firsthand view of the atmosphere of the Backyard Brawl. It's uh, one of the best rivalries there is out there. Uh, I, I would say at least top ten. Maybe not top five, but definitely top ten. In my opinion, top five, but I'm a West Virginia fan. But definitely top ten. So live show there. It's going to be great. Uh, you, you'll see the West Virginia presence in the city of Pittsburgh. And West Virginia also carries the city of Washington, D.C. Yes, over Maryland. Maryland does not carry the city. West Virginia does. So West Virginia brings some value. Not enough to just grab West Virginia and nobody else, but enough to be packaged with somebody and – People are like, yep, that brings value. So we carry the state of West Virginia, uh, carry the city of Pittsburgh behind Penn State, and we carry the city of Washington, D.C. So that's the value that West Virginia brings to the ACC. Now, is this guaranteed? Absolutely not. Big 12 uh, already renegotiating their TV deal. Uh, it's, it, it looks like they're going to make right around $45 million a year, and they're saying by 2020. Uh, 2025 or 2026, they're going to be making 50 million a year, which is more than than what their last TV deal is. Still a drop in the bucket to what the SEC and Big Ten make. And if the ACC can get up to that 70 percent mark, that would definitely be a bigger TV deal than what the Big 12 would have. Definitely, 100 percent. That's why it would be attractive to Big 12 teams. And we heard earlier in the week that Oklahoma State was talking to the SEC, right? We heard that. Well, going to Blue Dude, why are they on the list of ACC, potentially going to the ACC, if we heard that they were talking to the SEC? Well, for one thing, talking is just talking. Nothing's come out that they're actually going to the SEC. But Oklahoma State is definitely on, the, on ESPN's radar but they're going to probably have to wait their turn as far as going to the SEC. They'll probably have to go through the ACC first. 
So like the teams that are being bumped up the SEC, the, the SEC now, uh, like uh, they're what North Carolina, Florida State, Clemson, Virginia, and this is all assuming that the grant of rights gets gets figured out. That's who the SEC wants right now. There's four sets. There's two sets of four for the SEC. Your first set is North Carolina, Florida State, uh, Clemson, and Virginia. And I was surprised that Miami wasn't on the first four, but that's a whole different story. But the second four is where you have West Virginia, Oklahoma State, Miami, and Virginia Tech. So they're on the second four. I would say definitely, if the money's better, go to the ACC first. And then if the SEC wants you later, that's fine. You know, if you if you have to do it that way, that's fine. But don't stay in a conference if you don't have to, if you have a choice. Don't stay in a conference like the Big 12 who is known. There is precedent for getting picked off. This is it's, it's not like this is the first time that the Big 12 has come under fire as far as losing members. Uh-uh. It's not even the second time. It's the third time. Third time. So if you have a choice, don't stay in a conference that has precedent and has history of getting picked apart. If you have a choice, take your choice. Now, if you don't have a choice, then you got to make the most the most of the situation and hope that it sticks together. You know, you got to just please just stick together. Uh, no other no other option, no other choice. But if you have to, but if you have a choice, you got to take the choice. And that's where West Virginia is right now. As of right now, we don't have a choice. But in the future, that choice could pop up, and you need to take the choice. Number one, potential of making more money. Number two, you get to play your rivals every single year. And that's another thing that West Virginia brings to the table, specifically for the ACC. Uh, you got your West Virginia pit rivalry, backyard brawl, big-time moneymaker year after year after year. You have West Virginia, Virginia Tech, the Black Diamond Trophy, big-time rivalry moneymaker year after year after year. Uh, and then the next year, I'd say West Virginia, Louisville. You don't know what I'm talking about? Google those games. Crazy, crazy games. You can ask Louisville fans. That was a good rivalry year after year after year. Syracuse was a great, great rivalry. As far as a West Virginia fan goes, I hated when we had to play in the Dome. Even when we were ranked and Syracuse was horrible, nine times out of ten, that was going to be a loss. I hated going to the Dome. That's a big-time rivalry year after year after year. And if Miami doesn't make the first cut, then at least for a while, there's another, another rivalry, uh, West Virginia and Miami. Uh, look up the Quincy Williams, uh, Williams, Quincy Wilson run against Miami. I think it's uh, either 2001 or 2002, one of the all-time greatest runs in history. Not only does he run a dude over, but he has to jump over him. So he bowls him over, and he has to jump over him. That was a crazy run. So, yeah, there's some great rivalries out there, some some great uh, potential money makers. And West Virginia wouldn't make money for the ACC. Now, it's all hearsay right now. There's a lot of – there's some things that need to happen uh, if that's going to happen. Right now, West Virginia is in the Big 12. Uh, right now, you know, we play uh, – Texas for a couple more years, uh, Oklahoma a couple a couple more years, uh, Oklahoma State, TCU, Iowa State, Kansas, Kansas State. Uh, we're going to start playing in Cincinnati. That's actually a good rivalry. Um, might not be a bad idea for uh, for the ACC to go out and grab Cincinnati because they have some good rivalries within the ACC. Uh, so we get to play them for a while. UCF up and coming, one of the best group of five teams uh, out there as far as brand goes. Houston. Uh, one of the biggest cities in the entire nation. The only problem for Houston is they have to compete with Texas and Texas A&M for fans, not to mention Baylor and TCU. So uh, even though they live, even though they're in a, a top five city in, in, as far as size in the United States, they have to fight these other bigger brands for fans. So not sure if the ACC would be interested in Houston uh, but they are a choice. Maybe Houston would be a better choice for the Pac-12, uh, and that's what the list says. So uh, a lot of things out there, and, and in order for that stuff to happen, there's there's still some other things to happen. 
But my point is, the biggest thing was the grant of rights and that TV deal. And with ESPN and the ACC interested in talking, that would make all this possible. And the Big 12 would be in danger. I don't know if y'all know this, but I'm a big-time Pepsi guy. I need to drink a Pepsi right now. Much better. Much, much better. So let's talk. Uh, hold on. What did I do with my notes? I just had it. See, why? Oh, here we go. Let's talk some West Virginia. And Neil Brown's, Neil Brown's getting a lot of heat right now. You know, uh, 2019, West Virginia went five and seven. 2020, six and four. 2021, six and seven. Oh, no. The program is going in the wrong direction. Neil Brown should be, you know, having a 10-win season by now. Really? No, no, no. That's not how it works at West Virginia. Go back to, to Rich Rod. He wasn't successful until his fourth or fifth year. Uh, I went back and looked at Dana Holgerson, who people have excused. Dana Holgerson is the one that drove West Virginia to the ground. But, okay, if that's the standard you want to you want to hold Neil Brown to, here you go. Well, in the first year with, uh, you know, Rich Rod talent. I know Bill Stewart is who he took over for, but he still had some Rich Rod talent. NFL talent, 10 and 3. Great first year. Good job. Second year, one of the most loaded West Virginia teams of all time. Seriously, go Google it. 2012 West Virginia. A lot of great, a lot of great names on there. Uh, NFL talent. What do you do? Seven and freaking six. Seven and six. All right. Okay. Okay. Year three, four and eight. Yeah. Four and eight. Year three. Year four, which is what Neil Brown's at. All right. You ready? The standard we're holding Neil Brown to. Dana Holgerson in year four, seven and six. Seven and six. So, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't get the whole... Uh, he's not doing as well as what Dana Hogerson was doing. Yes, he is. He's actually doing better. Now, Dana Hogerson bounced back with uh, eight and five in his fifth season, and then ten and three in his sixth season, and that was it. He plateaued. Uh, then he went seven and six, then eight and four. Twenty eighteen, also a very loaded team through the through the uh, transfer portal. Eight and four. Dana Hogerson's teams underperformed because he did not preach defense at all. So year four for Neil Brown, for Dana Hogerson, it was seven and six. And a lot of people are saying, well, if Neil Brown don't go eight and four, he needs to be fired. Needs to be fired. Well, uh, if you gave Dana Hogerson a pass for seven to six, then why are you holding Neil Brown to eight and four? Now, I do think we will go at least eight and four because of, you know, what we did in the offseason. Graham Harrell. Graham Harrell, offensive coordinator. That that's the biggest. Uh, that's the biggest get in the offseason. You can talk about JT Daniels all you want, but it's about Graham Harrell. West Virginia has not had an offensive coordinator in the first three years under Neil Brown. Uh, Neil Brown tried to call the offense at first. That didn't work, and then he handed the duties off to uh, Jared Parker. Jared Parker is not a seasoned offensive coordinator, and you could tell he didn't know what he was doing. And I'm not trash talking. Jared Parker, he did the best he could. Graham Harrell, seasoned. And every time Graham Harrell has gone to a new team, they have averaged, jumped 8 to 10 points per game as far as averaging points per game. Jumped 8 to 10 points per game. Last year, West Virginia averaged 25, just under 26 points per game. Uh, Wisconsin fan, thank you for the $2 Super Chase. Says, question, is this a StreamYard show? It is a StreamYard show. And I'm actually streaming this over uh, three different um, channels. Uh, Will Klein, thank you for the $2 Super Chat, says, Miami to the Big 12. There you go. I like it. Miami to the Big 12. Hey, if uh, – you know, hey, you never know. If they open – if they renegotiate that TV deal and things don't go the way that they want it to go as far as ESPN – that's possible. I don't see it happening, but it's possible. So, good job with that. Um, but for West Virginia this year, 
Offensive coordinator Graham Harrell, that was a big, big, big time get. He's actually the reason why uh, West Virginia got JT Daniels because JT Daniels was familiar with Graham Harrell. So the learning curve for uh, JT Daniels learning this offense doesn't even hardly exist. Maybe there's a small one, but it's not very big. Neil Brown has made it known that uh, whoever is the starting quarterback will have to win it. So it's not just going to be given to JT Daniels, but the fact that he's familiar with Graham Harrell, learning curve, not going to be that big. He'll probably be the starter. Now, the question is, can JT Daniels stay healthy? That's that's prime, prime objective number one. Yes. I think if JT Daniels stay, stays healthy throughout the entire season, West Virginia has the potential, I'm not predicting this, but it has the potential to have a 10-win season and beyond. If he stays healthy, West Virginia has the potential of having a 10-win season and beyond. Now, if he gets hurt, I still think West Virginia can have an 8-4 and four season. Why? Because West Virginia has put out a solid defense every year. Every year, Neil Brown has been the head coach at West Virginia. In 2020, it was elite. The number one defense against the pass. Top five overall. Last year, uh, we lost Tyke Smith and some other key players. We're still a top 40 defense. Uh, held opponents to, I think it was 21 or 22 points per game. Really good defense. Now, this offseason, yes, we lost Hakeem Mesidor, but that, that is nowhere close to as big of a loss as what Tyke Smith was. So I think our defense is going to be a little bit better. I think it'll be a top 25 defense. We're fine on defense. It has been our offense. Our offense has been horrible. Not just below average, bottom of the barrel. If our offense is just average this year, our win total will jump at least two wins. At least. If it's above average, it could jump three to four. If it's elite, hmm, hmm. Big 12 might have to look out for West Virginia if we have an elite offense. So remember what I said earlier, Graham Harrell, new team in his first year, jumped up an average of 8 to 10 points per game, right? If you would have, if you would have applied that to last year, let's say West Virginia scores 8 to 10 more points per game than what they did, right? What would their record what would have have been? 11 and 1. Yep, 11 and 1. So, yeah, I expect West Virginia to be much better. I am not predicting the, them to be 11 and 1, not at all, but at minimum 8 and 4, especially, especially if JT Daniels stays healthy. Uh, recruiting class number 35, that's about right for West Virginia. We had two four stars. Uh, this is 247. Some of those uh, three stars are high end three stars where rivals count it as four stars. So that's fluctuation in 23 stars. Transfer portal, not bad. Number 33 with seven three stars. Once again, JT Daniels uh, rated as a three star quarterback uh, under 247. I guess if you factor in his uh, injuries, I can believe that. But injuries not included, he's, he's a high end four star. Uh, possible five star, so that's that's why you know they have the talent on offense to to have a big time jump. Number one offensive coordinator, number two all five offensive starters on the offensive line will be back. That's another thing that drew in uh, J T Daniels. Third thing, playmakers at wide receiver. You have Caden Prather, Bryce Ford, Wheaton. Uh, they're gonna have some. They're gonna have breakout years this year, especially Caden Prather. That dude. Uh, that's the dude to, to watch out for. He's going to be one of the best wide receivers in the nation. A running back core is going to be elite. Uh, we did have Lynn J. Dixon, but he was he he was buried on the on the depth chart. Very fast guy, but he was not coming to workouts. Uh, it was basically a mutual decision as to why he went to the transfer portal. He was not putting in the work. Same issues that he had at Clemson. He was having at West Virginia. I hate to see that because dude was a phenomenal talent. He got lazy. I don't. I don't know why. Maybe his love for football just went away. I, I don't know what his problem is. 
it, it's not just West Virginia. He said he had the same issues at Clemson. I thought maybe we could work it out at West Virginia. Turns out, mm -mm, couldn't do it. So, um, I don't know. Uh, he had his demons. Got lazy. Um, I wish nothing but the best for Lynn J. Dixon, but uh, he, he's got to get it figured out because uh, it, it wasn't working. I just saw this comment by Joey Foster. I'm actually uh, minorly freaking out about this. Joey Foster says, guys, coming up on a future show, the legend himself, 1993 running back Robert Walker will be on the show. I am excited about this guest. That is crazy. One of the all-time lines, man, one of the all-time lines that, that I watched on TV. I think I was uh, 11 years old in 93, and I remember the Miami-West Virginia game in Morgantown. Walker left. Walker left. Walker scores. Walker touchdown. I remember that line. That wasn't word for word. I used to remember word for word. I'm getting old. But I remember that. It's burned into my brain. Robert Walker. That's going to be awesome. Well done. Well done. And this is all Joey. He's, Joey says, I'm great, especially after just sitting on the phone with Robert Walker. Just freaking talk to him. Man, that's going to be great. Uh, I, I'm excited for that. I wish that was this show, but patience. Got to have patience. Patience is a virtue. All right, so 2021 football schedule for West Virginia. Okay? It all comes down to the first five games. First five games will, will determine our season. I think in the first five games we're going to have one loss. We'll get that. We'll get to that in a second. If West Virginia can get through those five, those five first games with just one loss, I think we go nine and three. Yes, you heard me, nine and three. Now, if we manage to lose all of our road games in those first five games, that's three losses. I think we'll go seven and five. If we end up with two losses, I think we go eight and four. First five games very important. Three road games. The first game I'm going to be at, at Pitt. Yes, it's a road game, but it's going to be 40% West Virginia fans. So it, it's it's going to feel like a West Virginia home game, sort of. There's going to be some Pitt fans. There's going to be a lot of loud West Virginia fans. That's an important game. I'm going to be there, and I'm going to do a live show. You guys are going to see the Backyard Brawl live, at least the pregame. I might sneak some lives uh, inside the stadium while the game's going on, so keep your eyes out for that. Uh, at Pitt, I think that's going to be a win. Because of everything we gained, we're going to have uh, an above-average defense, and we're going to have an offense. Uh, Pitt lost Jordan Addison and Kenny Pickett. Uh, the two biggest losses that you could have picked, Pitt lost them. So I like our chances. And I know West Virginia is an underdog going into this game. Uh, last time I checked, six and a half. It might be seven now. I don't know. But I went from, I think West Virginia is going to lose this game, but hopefully they can pull it off. Then we grabbed Graham Harrell. I'm like, okay, maybe we can pull off a last-second win. Then we grabbed JT Daniels. All right, I think West Virginia is going to sneak out with a close win. And then they lost Jordan Addison. I think West Virginia is going to win comfortably. When I say comfortably, I'm going to say at least a touchdown, probably 10 points. I think West Virginia wins by 10 points. I know that's going to sound like homerism, but that's how I progressed. With what we gained and what they lost, I think West Virginia wins by 10 points. That's my opinion. That's a win. Has to be a win. Then we get Kansas at home. Kansas is going to be a little bit better, but West Virginia is going to be a lot better. That's going to be a blowout win. Towson at home. FCS, blowout win. 3-0 and at Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech is going to take a massive step backwards, but it is on the road, so could be close. I'm still picking West Virginia in a close game. 4-0. At Texas, this is where I think West Virginia slips up because a road win at Virginia Tech is going to be a very emotional road win, and it's back-to-back -back road games. I think Texas makes West Virginia slip up, and, and Texas does have talent. I think Texas will go 7-5, 8-4, and four, so uh, there won't be any shame in losing to Texas in 2022, and I think that's what happens to West Virginia. We lose to Texas on the road because of all the things that I mentioned. So we're four and one going into the bye week. Perfectly placed. Coming off a road loss. And then we come back home to Baylor. Baylor's never beaten West Virginia in Morgantown. It's not going to happen this year. 
West Virginia wins in a nail-biter because Baylor's going to be really, really good, but it's on the road, and West Virginia is going to be much better. That's a win. I think it's fairly comfortable, fairly, maybe by a touchdown. It'll be a nail-biter. Uh, nail-biter. Baylor will keep it close, but I think West Virginia stretches it in the end. Seven to ten point win right there at Baylor. So we're looking at, what, five and one, right? At Texas Tech. Potential trap game. West Virginia is better, but I think it's going to be closer than what it should be. Uh, Tyler Show is a turnover machine, and I trust our defense to take advantage to, of Texas Tech and turn him over, and our offense will stick it in the end zone whenever they need to. Six and six and one, that's a win. TCU at home. TCU is going to have a big letdown year this year. A lot of transition. It's in Morgantown. Not even worried about this game. That's a win. Seven and one. At Iowa State, at first I had this as a loss, but Iowa State lost a lot. But it is in Ames, Iowa. That's a tough place to win. Very, very tough place. But I think West Virginia goes in and barely, barely squeaks out a win against Iowa State. 8-1. and one. Then we get Oklahoma at home. Big transition for Oklahoma. If this was on the road, I'd probably pick Oklahoma. But it's in Morgantown. West Virginia breaks the streak. And I'm going to be at that game. And I'm going to be celebrating West Virginia uh, breaking the streak of not being able to beat Oklahoma in the Big 12. And I do think Oklahoma is going to be a 10-win team, but I don't think they're they're going to be one of their you know elite years where it, you're not going to beat Oklahoma this year in the Big 12. No, it's not going to be like that. They're going to be really, really good, but I'm going to say more like a 10-2 and two good. So I think they'll be beatable. And West Virginia is going to be one of their losses. 10 and 1. Then we get Kansas State at home. I think Kansas State's actually going to be a sleeper. If this were a road game, I'd be picking Kansas State. I think Kansas State is a Big 12 sleeper, and Kansas State could be one of those 10 and 2 teams. But it's in Morgantown, and we owe them one from last year. Uh, that was one of those 50 50 football games uh, that we had it close, and then a stupid turnover in the fourth quarter. And they stretched the lead and beat us 34 to 17. So we owe them one. And our offense is going to be much better. I think it's going to be closer than, than, than people realize, though, or, or than what I even think. It's going to be a close, hard fought win for West Virginia. 11 and 1. That's a win. Finally, the last game at Oklahoma State. I don't like where this game is placed. I don't think Oklahoma State's going to be quite as good as what they were last year, but it's on the road. And Oklahoma State will be good enough to beat West Virginia. I think that's a comfortable win for Oklahoma State. Uh, I think they'll beat us maybe 10, 14 points, something like that. 10 and 2. I know you're laughing. I know you are. This is all based on if JT Daniels stays healthy. Okay? He's got to stay healthy for this to happen. Okay? And... That's not counting a slip-up game. You, you gotta you gotta factor in a slip-up game. So I'm actually going nine and three. I just don't know where that slip game that slip-up game is going to be. Uh, could be at Texas Tech because Texas Tech screams uh, trap game, screams it. It's sandwiched in between two home games. Texas Tech isn't expected to be very good. Uh, last year we kind of slept walk through Texas Tech, and we got beat on a last-second field goal, right? Uh, you know, we came out and, and we scored zero points, and Texas Texas Tech went out to a 20 to nothing lead at halftime. 20 to nothing, or was it 17 to nothing? It, it's something like that. And then West Virginia comes back. We tie it 20 to 20, uh, but Texas Tech had the ball last, and we should have let them score. Hey, losing by three points or losing by a touchdown, you still lose. At least if you would have let them score, you would have given yourself some time. When I when I say last second field goal, I'm talking like a 20-yarder. He wasn't going to miss it. Let them score to give you some time. We were out of timeouts, right? So let them score, okay? You lose by three, you lose by seven, you still lose. And he's not missing a 20-yard field goal. So that's the one thing that drew, that drove me crazy about Texas Tech last year. And Texas Tech has had uh, Neil Brown's number. I don't think he's beaten them yet at uh, West Virginia. So that could be the trap game. Whatever the trap game is, um, 
I think nine and three is what West Virginia is going to go. The other two losses that I have for sure at Texas, because where it's at, uh, it's a back-to-back -back road trip, emotional win on the road to Virginia Tech. And, uh, yeah, I, I think we're losing that. And Texas will have talent. I think Texas will go eight and four. No shame in losing to Texas. And then the last game, Oklahoma State, not going to be as good as what they were last year, but still pretty good. Still good enough to beat West Virginia, especially at home. Uh, and they'll have something to play for. So it's going to be a raucous environment, uh, probably sold out. Uh, Oklahoma State could still be a 9-3, and three, possible 10-win team, so no shame in that. So those are the, the two for sure losses. Uh, possibly, you know, the trap game to Texas Tech. Kansas State, if they if that was a road a road trip uh, for West Virginia, I would most certainly be predicting that a loss because I think Kansas State is a sleeper. That could be a slip up game. Maybe we finish the season back to back losses. Uh, we go into Kansas State what nine and one, then we lose to Kansas State nine and two. That deflates us, and we go on the road and drop one to Oklahoma State nine and three. Uh, so we end on a down note. Hopefully we can win our bowl, get to a 10-win season. Could happen that way. Uh, so there's a lot of possibilities as far as West Virginia getting to a 10-win season. Even if we go 9-3, and three, maybe we can get a good matchup and go 10-3, and three, have a 10-win season, kind of like what Kentucky did. So something like that. And last year, uh, whenever we were matched up against Minnesota in the guaranteed rate ball, I was like, this is a, a, this is a horrible matchup. One of the worst, it's like being matched up with Oklahoma State all over again. And what happened? Oklahoma State beat us 24 to 3. Terrible, terrible matchup. They they mimicked Oklahoma State almost exactly, except for the offense. Oklahoma State was a little bit better. And whenever I did my pregame for the uh, guaranteed rate ball, I was, I was like, guys, I'm trying to give you hope. I mean, there's always a chance that West Virginia can beat Minnesota, but I'm not predicting that. I think Minnesota wins comfortably. The reason that was a bad matchup is, number one, Minnesota's defense was better than West Virginia's. There goes that advantage out the window. But the second thing, the biggest thing that made me think, there's no hope. This is not happening. Minnesota was really, really good at flipping the field. They weren't necessarily good at scoring. They weren't a high-scoring game. But they were good at flipping the field and making you start from your own 5-10 yard line. And West Virginia was the opposite. Our return game was horrible. And flipping the field, horrible. Uh, they were elite, top 10. We were horrible, bottom 10. Terrible matchup. What happens? We get whooped 18 to 6. Well, Golden Blue, dude, that's only about 12 points. Did you watch the game? Did you watch the game? Exactly what I predicted happened. They made us start from our 5 10 yard line almost every stinking possession. Uh, we either go three and out or we get to the 40 yard line. Still can't flip the field because. Our punter wasn't all that great, and they start in decent field position and run running clock. They were good at running clock, uh, didn't have to you know, score a touchdown every possession. They were just good at what they did, and they did it really well against West Virginia, and that's, what, that's almost word for word about what I predicted would happen. So that was a bad matchup. So for a bowl, hopefully we don't get a bad matchup to where – our weaknesses are their strengths because that's exactly what happened to West Virginia in the guaranteed rate ball. So in order for West Virginia to get to a 10-win season, if we go 9-3, and got to have a, a an at least a, a decent matchup in the bowl game to get 10 wins. Now, at what point is Neil Brown's job safe? Going by Dana Holgerson, 7-6. and six. Seven and six. What? Yeah, seven and five in the regular season or six and six in the regular season and win the bowl. Seven and six. Go to Blue, dude. That's not a big step forward. Yeah. And I don't think that's going to happen. I do think we get, uh, I, I do think we take a step forward. But going by Dana Holgerson, who everybody gave a pass to, seven and six. I mentioned Dana Holgerson's career at West Virginia, his first year, NFL talent, 10 and three but a soft schedule in the Big East. So he, st he still didn't take advantage of the NFL talent. Year two, 2012, one of the most loaded West Virginia teams of all time. NFL talent all over the field. Where do you go? Seven and six. Horrible. Year three, four and eight. In year three, Neil Brown went six and seven. That's better than Dana Horson. The, on the only year that 
Neil Brown hasn't done better than Dana Hogerson was year one. And Dana Hogerson had NFL talent and a Big E schedule. And he went 10-3. and three. So if you want to compare year one, that's it. 5-7 and seven for Neil Brown, 10-3 and three for Dana Hogerson. Year two, 6-4 and four for Neil Brown, 7-6 and six for Dana Hogerson. So it's one-to-one, one, right? Hogerson was better in year one. Neil Brown, better in year two. Year three, Hogerson went four and eight. Neil Brown, six and seven. So Neil Brown has actually already proven himself. Already proven himself. So in my opinion, I hope this doesn't happen, but in my opinion, if we go seven and six, he is safe for one more year. And then the next year, he would have to go eight and four in the regular season because uh, Dana Holgerson did go eight and five in 2015, and then he had a ten, his 10 win season in 2016, but then back to seven and six and eight and four. 2018, talent all over the place because of transfers, eight and four. Dana Holgerson underachieved. But if you want to compare Neil Brown to Dana Holgerson, then he just has to go seven and six and his job's safe. People will go ape if Neil Brown goes seven and six. He needs to go now. Nope, he's earned one more year, and then he has to go 8-4 for real. But I think West Virginia does uh, take a step forward. At minimum, 8-4. and four. Uh, You know, the funny thing is, I see Georgia fans in the chat, you know, saying, this guy's crazy, this is funny. Weren't you the same Georgia fans that whenever uh, JT Daniels got injured, he rehabbed, he was available to start, but Kirby Sp- – but Kirby Smart stuck with Stetson Bennett. You guys went ape. Am I, am, am I remembering that correctly? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. Uh, JT Daniels got injured last year when he played for Georgia as the starter. By the way, 7-0. Didn't lose at all at Georgia. He got injured. He rehabbed. He was ready to go. But Kirby's like, no, we're sticking with Stetson. Georgia fans lost their mind. Why? Because they knew JT Daniels was the better quarterback. They knew JT Daniels was elite. So I don't know why you think this is funny because like I said, this is assuming JT Daniels stays healthy. So were you just playing last year? Were you lying last year? Nah, we didn't really think that. We just, we, we were just trying to put on a show. See what I'm saying? You're, you're, you're not making sense. You acted one way last year, but this year you're acting a different way. So you know, I'll let y'all decide that. But this is assuming if JT Daniels stays healthy. If JT Daniels stays healthy, West Virginia, yes, has a really good shot of going 10 and 2. Now, things would change if he get if he gets injured. I still think we can go 8 and 4, but no shot at a 10 win season. So, that prediction was based on JT Daniels staying healthy. And maybe if he does stay healthy, we don't have that slip-up game, and we go 10-2 and two in the regular season. 10-2, and two, something like that. Uh, and then win our bowl, 11-2. That'd be, man, that would be an awesome season. Uh, Lamonsky, $5 super chip. Appreciate that, buddy. Your, your thoughts on the Athlon predictions, see, see chat questions. I, I, I don't have to. I saw, well, if you're talking about other teams, I'm assuming you're talking about West Virginia, but I saw the Athlon prediction for West Virginia. It's laughable. Uh, let me make sure I don't get that wrong. I think what I had it, what what I saw was uh, six and six for the regular season, but uh, let me make sure I get that correctly. I don't want to misquote. All right. Um, let's see. They say, well, obviously they're down on. Uh, Neil Brown, because he started 17 and 18, but they didn't talk about how Dana Hargerson did. Uh, let's see. What did they say? Come on. What? A bunch of nonsense. Well, they said national ranking 51, so yeah. I'd have to see the actual conference rankings. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's probably what I need to look at. Let's see here. Conference predictions for the Big 12. That's what I need to do. Can you tell I was not ready for that question? (laughs) Hold on. Uh, Big 12 prediction. 
for 2022. Here we go. All right, so I think so. Kansas is predicted to go uh, finish ten, finish three and seven. I agree with that. Uh, number what's number nine? Texas Tech five and seven. I actually agree with that. Uh, TCU number eight, six and six. I actually agree with that. Number seven, Kansas State, six and six. Ah, that's where I kind of disagree. I think, uh, I think uh, Kansas State's going to be a little bit better than that. I, I thought they had West Virginia lower though. Number six, Iowa State at six and six. Oh, they have, <laughs> they have a bunch of teams going six and six. I guess this is a bunch of tiebreakers. So they have West Virginia finishing fifth, but going six and six. How how they and. So, TCU, they have finishing 6-6, six and six, having a 4-5 and five record in the Big 12. Kansas State, they have finishing 6-6, 4-5 six and six, four and five record in the Big 12. Iowa State, finishing 6-6, 4-5 six and six, four and five record in the Big 12. West Virginia, finishing 5th, 4-5 and five record in the Big 12. Oh, excuse me. Wait, 5-4 and four record in the Big 12. All right, that's a little bit better. Uh, Baylor finishing fourth, seven and five, five and four in the Big 12. Uh, three, Texas, eight and four, six and three in the Big 12. Two, Oklahoma State, nine and three, six and three in the Big 12. And finishing first, Oklahoma, 10 and two, Big 12, seven and two. So they're just overall low on the Big 12. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that's, that's all over the place. I agree. Well, I, I I actually don't agree with Kansas in last place. I think they'll finish above last place. Uh, I think they can beat um, I think they can beat TCU and Texas Tech. So I have them probably in eighth. I think uh, TCU finishes last, uh, maybe a three and nine, something like that. Four and eight, it'll be close, but tiebreakers, you know. Texas Tech, I actually agree. I would have them at number nine, probably five and seven. Uh, then, like I mentioned before, uh, Kansas, but still not getting to a ball. I- I'm thinking more like a five and seven for them. Uh, number seven, that's where I had Iowa State. I think Iowa State takes a, a significant step backwards this year. They lose a lot of starters. Um, their their running back, I can't think of his name, but I also know um, Brock Purdy is going to be gone. A lot of new faces. I think they barely get to a bowl six and six, um, but I would have them in seventh. Um, in sixth, I'm trying to do this off the top of my head without looking at my notes because I'm not going to look for them. Uh, in sixth, let's see who would I have? Not Oklahoma State, not Oklahoma, not West Virginia, not Baylor. Let's see who else do I have left? Um, I think already. Maybe that's where I would have. Um, no, not Kansas State. There's another. Who am I missing? Can, uh, Texas Tech, Baylor, uh, TCU. Guys, who am I missing, guys? Who am I missing? One, I'm going to have Baylor. I think Baylor wins it again. But I think they go like 11-1, and 10-2, and two, one of their losses to West Virginia. Uh, two, that's where I'm going to put Oklahoma. I think they have like a 10-2. and two. No, I had TCU at number nine. Uh, two is where I'm going to have Oklahoma, but I think they're 10-2. and two. Um Three, West Virginia, nine and three. They do beat Oklahoma, but not quite as good. Uh, four, that's where I'm going to have Kansas State, sleeper, sleeper Big 12. But still, nine and three, losing to West Virginia. So there's your tiebreaker. Uh, five, Oklahoma State. So yes, I have them taking a step back, but still, eight and four, decent with the win against West Virginia to win the, to uh, finish the season. Five. Who am I freaking missing? So I did Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Let me go through the rankings. Oklahoma, no. Baylor, Oklahoma, West Virginia, Kansas State, and Oklahoma State, right? And then in last place, I had TCU, then Texas Tech, then uh, Kansas, and then Iowa State. Texas, Texas, number five. There we go. Got it, Texas. Uh, Texas at number five, but still eight and four, seven and five seasons. So there you go. So let me rewind, go through that again. One Baylor, I think they finish either eleven and one or ten and two, 
probably 11 and 1 get to the Big 10 championship, uh, Big 12 championship. Two, Oklahoma 10 and 2 Big 12 championship game. Three, West Virginia 9 and 3. Um four, Kansas State sleeper 9 and 3 but tiebreaker loss to West Virginia. Five, Texas and even though they're five, that's like, man, that's not very high. Eight and four. Just a couple of tiebreaker losses. That's all this comes down to. Eight and four, maybe seven and five, decent season. Uh, let's see. Did I already do Oklahoma State? No, Oklahoma State was six, I think. But I have them taking a step back, like seven and five, but finish the season on, on, on a decent note. Seven, Iowa State, six and six, barely getting to a ball. Uh, maybe seven and five, outside chance. Um uh, Eight is where I had Kansas, but still missing the ball, like five and seven. Nine, Texas Tech, and then 10, TCU. Uh, TCU, total real, total rebuild mode. Uh, Chris D, $5 Super Chat. Thank you for supporting the channel. He says, WV predicted at the eight spot in Big 12 is a ridiculous man. Uh, I predict four, third, at the highest, eight and four with nine and three ceiling. Uh uh, I agree with that. Thanks for the great content, GBD. Who predicted West Virginia eighth? Like, even in this, they're what fifth? I know six and six, not great, but still fifth. Uh, there you go. But yeah, anybody predicting West Virginia finished eight? That's just that's nonsense. That's either trolling or sheer stupidity. That's what that comes down to. All right. So, there you go. Uh, anyways, guys. I had a long day. I had two regular videos on my channel, Golden Bluted, which, by the way, if you're not subscribed to that, go check it out. Videos every day. Uh, here on the Voice of College Football, if you're not subscribed here, again, videos every single day. So both of those channels, videos every single day, we got your bases covered. So be subscribed to the Voice of Mo uh, not said a no-no. Voice of College Football. Be subscribed to the Voice of College Football, and go to Blue Dude. There you go. Uh, and check out the West Virginia channel because I'm I'm also simulcasting on that channel as well. We're trying to get that channel to uh, 1,000 subscribers. Uh, we're almost to 600, so we need a few more to get to 1,000. So check out one, one, the Voice of College Football. If you're not subscribed, what are you waiting on? Two, go to Blue Dude. That's my channel. I'd appreciate your support. And that's all I do as well. And three, the West Virginia uh, football channel through the Voice of College Football. Even if you don't like West Virginia, even if you're not going to watch every video about West Virginia, just hit the subscribe button and get us to 1,000. That would help us out. We greatly appreciate that. But anyways, I hope you all enjoyed the live show. I know it's not quite as long as it usually is, uh, but you know there was one of me, and it's been a long day. Uh, Got to get some rest, and I'm actually pretty hungry. So, uh, uh, yeah, I need to eat, like, almost the shakes. But anyways, hope you all enjoyed the channel and or the show. And, uh, you know, it's all about entertainment. So if, if uh, you know, you were able to forget about your stressful day for a little bit and just be entertained, then I've done my job. Uh, Lemansky or Lemansky, hopefully I'm saying one of those has to be correct. Lemansky or Lemansky. Five dollar super chat. Appreciate you. He says, uh, "Bears ten and three, Sooners nine and four, Cowboys eight and four, Texas seven and five, Cats eight and four, West Virginia seven and five. That's uh, that's low ball in West Virginia just a little bit, but it's acceptable. It's acceptable. Let's say um, you know J T Daniels gets injured and we lose a couple more games." Uh, that's how I would see that. So uh, good job, and thank you for uh, supporting the channel. All right, guys, I'm bouncing, guys. Uh, hope you all have a great weekend. More regular videos from The Voice of College Football, I'm sure, tomorrow, and more regular videos from me, Golden Blue Dude, uh, tomorrow. Maybe a couple. I've been doing two a day right now. Uh, and if you do subscribe to Golden Blue Dude, make sure to hit the bell because I don't have my live shows scheduled i just do it whenever i can so that way you're notified um whenever i go live all right guys anyways i'm out i'm exhausted i'm tired and i'm hungry so y'all have a great weekend and we'll see you next live show